WWE Monday Night Raw took an interesting approach, and I think that it paid off tonight. We had such big moments on Monday Night Raw that leads up to the road to WrestleMania and actually eventually WrestleMania, but they took this format and flipped it on its head and made something very interesting out of the way they do an episode of Monday Night Raw. Now, I don't want to say this is the reason, but the rumors were circulating that Bruce Pritchard, now a part of the WWE creative, he's going to be Vince McMahon's right-hand man, and Monday was going to be his first time. The big story leading into Monday Night Raw was Roman Reigns' return. What is he going to say? He's got a lot to say on his mind. And also Ric Flair's birthday. Both of those two things add up together to make an interesting Monday Night Raw. Because you have the current fans who love the Roman Reigns. And you have the nostalgia old school fans who love Ric Flair. You can mix both of those together and make an interesting episode of television. Now they did something great here with have Roman Reigns open the show hot. Coming out. They gave him plenty of time. The segment went about 20, 25 minutes long. Roman Reigns did say that he's in remission, which means he's back and he's ready to go. So there's the thing. Uh, He looked at the WrestleMania sign and fans thought, oh, he's going to WrestleMania. WWE did this weird thing where they had Roman Reigns on the apron and then they had the WrestleMania sign like perfectly placed over there. So it worked out perfect for him. Um, The way that they set this up, though, was that he said, I'm going to take baby steps before... I get there. He said he's got to crawl before he walks, before he runs is kind of the saying he went with. So Roman Reigns, uh, you know, we'll see him later again in the show. But right now, this is what we get. Roman Reigns is back in the WWE. They let him have his moment. They did this thing. Uh, So what they did with the show, which was very interesting, is that they kind of interweave the entire show together into one seamless type of show. You would have a wrestler do his thing. Before that's over, another wrestler will come out. And with the Roman Reigns thing, that ended. And Seth Rollins came out, kind of gave him his high five and said, yo, I'm glad you're back, brother. And that's the thing. So we had this weird segments where they would we'd show a thing, a thing would happen, and then another thing would go straight into it. And I thought that was pretty interesting. I love the format of that. It makes you stay on your toes and you got to think about, you know, what's going to happen next. Because there was a segment with Elias that happened on the show where Elias came out, he was going to sing, but then Lacey Evans music hit. But then that didn't go anywhere. Dean Ambrose came out and then uh, DDT and then Dean Ambrose challenged to a match, a no DQ match later that night, Drew McIntyre. And then things just kind of went the way they did. So it was very interesting, the format that they did the show, and I really did like it. Um, One of the things that I thought was very cool was they did a Moment of Bliss segment with Finn Balor and then Leo Rush interrupted him. And then Leo Rush is like, okay, let me go get ready for the match. But then that never happened. So Leo Rush was like, or it was actually Alexa Bliss who said, no, the match is going to go on right now. So then the match happened. And then Leo Rush lost. And then Bobby Lashley got mad because that should have been his shot for the Intercontinental title. And then we had this segment backstage where Bobby Lashley was getting ready. And he's like, I have a match with Braun Strowman. I can't be worried about that stuff. Can I count on you tonight? And uh, they went out there to have their Braun Bobby Lashley match. And that actually never happened because they got into a brawl before the match even started. And then Braun Strowman took out everybody and that was it. And that was pretty cool. Just the way that they're doing this. They showed Bobby Lashley, you know, that you have the typical locker room scene or whatever. But Bobby Lashley was actually standing in Gorilla before he was to go out, which I really enjoy that because that sets up the pace for, okay, he's right there. He's ready. Go. And then Leo Rush had to sell that previous match that he had going on with Finn Balor. And I just thought that was pretty cool. Um, Obviously, we had the, uh, the Shield come out. Kind of a reunion. Not really. They, uh, Dean was getting beat up and then Seth and Roman came out and that was one of the saves of there. And then we just wondered, is Dean and Seth and Roman going to get back together in the shield and all that? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, but just the way that they interweave this was, was a very interesting concept and I love the way that they do it. And hopefully they can keep this format going. Um, the one of the things that I really disliked, um, they did the Ruby riot match Ronda Rousey, that kind of thing. There was like a, Ruby Riot, Ronda Rousey was continuing their little thing. So we had uh, Ronda tag up with Natalia and then the Riot Squad. And then uh, that all went to head, right? Ronda Rousey did her thing. And then out came Becky Lynch. Things went down, right? Match ended in a DQ with Becky Lynch coming out. Becky Lynch got handcuffed, taken away, right? She was handcuffed out of there. Then Ronda Rousey picks up the microphone. She says, hey, Vince, come out here. Vince, Vince McMahon, come out here. 
Boy, is she not good on the microphone. Boy, do they need to work on this. They need to work on Ronda Rousey's mic skills. And I'm not just picking on Ronda Rousey just to pick on her, but she talks a million miles an hour. It's about as fast as I'm doing with this review. But when you're talking in front of a live crowd, you have to pause for emphasis. You have to keep things dramatic. And by pausing like that, you will get that dramatic stuff. But she's like, no, 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 no. Vince is supposed to be a man who's fair and make tough decisions. Make the right decision, Vince. She kind of stumbled over her words, too. I just didn't like the way she delivered this promo. She was face-to-face with Stephanie. She called out Vince, but face-to-face with Stephanie. And that's where they had this little dialogue or whatever. Then she lays down the title. The, the championship, she's like, this title is not a championship. It's just a belt, which I thought was very interesting writing there. And she lays it down and says, Becky, Charlotte, Ronda, Mania needs to happen. Lays the belt down and she leaves and that's it. And then Stephanie and Triple H are backstage. They have that championship. Where is that going to lead? I don't know. So then going forward, the whole setup is the Ric Flair birthday and we see legends are going to come out. Shawn Michaels is back. We got Kurt Angle as a part of the segment. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat's going to be there. We just get like all the who's who's of like, you know, Ric Flair's big career. So that's pretty cool. And uh, then the main thing we see here, the main big thing is that Triple H and Stephanie are walking backstage because they're going to start out this segment. This kind of threw me off. I was like, why are they doing this? Because they didn't even address Ronda Rousey's segment from earlier tonight. What are they going to do? But then they talked about it in the ring, and I was like, okay, whatever. So it kind of like, the way that I would describe this Raw, it was kind of like controlled chaos, right? You saw the authority figures running the show, but it was really ran by the asylum, right? The the inmates were running the asylum, as they say. But uh, it was kind of controlled chaos where it was like Triple H and Stephanie were like, We'll just get to it at another time was kind of the vibe I got with that. So uh, the Ric Flair segment was a go. We were ready to go. Everybody was here. We were ready for the segment. There was a cake in the ring. And, you know, when we get segments like this, we think cake in the ring, we're going to get somebody's going to get hit with the cake. Maybe Ric Flair's going to get with the cake. That's what's going to happen. And the big thing everybody thought with this segment was that Becky Lynch was going to make a return from the police station and she was going to attack Ric Flair who's Charlotte's dad and that's kind of how that segment would end with Becky Lynch looking great that would be the end of Monday Night Raw but instead greatest thing ever I think this is a Bruce Pritchard idea I don't know but I've never seen this done before in professional wrestling ever Batista you see backstage Batista grabs a cameraman Batista right he's back he grabs a cameraman and pulls him over and says film this and then the cameraman's filming it, which I thought was brilliant because, you know, why is there always a cameraman backstage? Doesn't make any sense. Well, Batista put it together and there it was. He goes into Ric Flair's locker room. And what does he do? He pulls Ric Flair out, bloody and battered Ric Flair, takes off his glasses and says, hey, Hunter, do I have your attention now? Triple H in the ring runs to the back, security, everything. That's it. Batista's gone. That's the end of Monday Night Raw. Batista's back in the WWE. And what a great way to write that into the story is the evolution thing that we had going on. Remember in the past with evolution. The payoff is real, Tubby. The payoff is real. All right. Tubby Emu, another YouTuber, always likes to talk about this payoff thing where WWE writes long-term stories. Maybe they're doing it here. Maybe they're not. I don't know. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt with this one. But here's what I will say. Raw was great. This format, this formula that they had with this controlled chaos formula worked perfect for me. You got to see some NXT guys wrestle, right? Which I think is still an NXT showcase because they still have the NXT nameplates. So I'm not sure if they're full-time main roster guys, but they're showing their NXT nameplates. So I'm assuming it's still NXT guys until further notice. Maybe they'll do a WrestleMania showcase match. Would work good for them if they want to continue to build that brand. But I think Aleister Black... I mean, there's been rumors that he's been saying his farewell at house shows, live events, and, uh, you know, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, and I uh, see, I, I just don't know. Ricochet, I guess. I guess Ricochet and Aleister Black could be called up, but I don't know. We'll have to see where that goes. Honestly, I thought the way that they did Raw was very, very interesting, right? You have one thing after another, after another, after another, keep three hours flowing, and it never felt like, because... 
there's been times where Raw, you know, Raw is a three hour show. Where it's dragged on, it seems like five hour show, right? But this show, to me, they had that interweaving of the stories, the way that everything went down. Yeah, there's still those cringeworthy moments on Monday Night Raw. Yeah, the Ronda Rousey segment wasn't that great. The Alexa Bliss thing was really weird. She kind of said that she would show her if Finn Balor showed his abs. Okay. All right. Women's Revolution. Woo! But anyway, I thought it was very good. I thought the way, like just the format of the show, the fresh take on the way the format worked for the show where they interweaved everything. Like you would have a match, then another guy would come out in another match. And it, it felt like you were they were like crunched for time, but they weren't. Here's what they did. They cut out all the entrances and all the stuff, the filler stuff with Michael Cole talking and Renee Young talking, Corey Graves is talking about things. Yeah, of course they're doing that thing where they have to recap what just happened because you want that to go down. But it's not just like one of these things where they're just talking just to be talking, you know? It's kind of like they took out all the junk and let the people have their matches and, and showcase their talent in the ring. And those main stories that they needed to do, like the Roman Reigns thing at the top of the show, they gave that enough time to breathe. They let Roman do his thing. The crowd was into it. It was very well well written. I don't even think it was written. I think Roman just kind of went out there and said what he wanted to say. And I feel like that's kind of how it was. It was just like, let the segments that need to be longer and need to breathe, let those happen. And then the ones that are, you know, kind of not that interesting, just kind of put those in and let that go down. Um, the big thing like takeaway here is that Batista's back in the WWE setting up for Batista Triple H at Mania. Probably. I think that's the way they're going to go. Roman Reigns is back. Looks like we might get some sort of shield reunion versus the three-man bland, as I heard a name for those guys. Um, but we'll see. We'll see where they go with that. I don't know. I honestly, like my honest take here is that Dean Ambrose is not going to like the group and he's going to go against Roman at WrestleMania. We're going to get Roman Dean at Mania. I don't know. That's just my prediction. He'll, Dean Ambrose, you know, the rumors have been that he's out on the, he's out on the, out of the company after WrestleMania, WWE.com publicly said that. So we will see if that's the case here and there. Um, I'm not going to be a speculation guy here and predict the whole WrestleMania match card, but I will say that we have some interesting things leading up. And this is one of those things where they did that interweaving of the stories and then they left us with enough questions and answers because if you get all the answers, why are you going to tune in next week? That's really the the case right there. So we want to know what's up with Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. We want to know what's up with Ric Flair. Is he okay? Is Batista back? Where is that going to go? I mean, there's a lot of stories going on here, and we want to know exactly where it's going to go leading up through Fastlane up to WrestleMania. So kudos to you, WWE. I will say A-plus Raw. Will it be another A-plus Raw again? I don't know. We'll have to see. But they did a very strategic thing here. Get the current fans to tune in for the Roman Reigns. You know, they're going to get the most people to watch that. Then have the hardcore old school fans tune in for the Ric Flair birthday and then bring back Batista to seal the deal. Boom. Killed it. Loved it. The way they did that was perfect. So anyway, guys, I want to know your thoughts of Raw. Did you think it was great? Did you like it? Did you love it? Did you want more of it? Did you think the interweaving of the stories was interesting? Or, you know, maybe they're just, maybe they're not. Maybe it's not that interesting. Maybe I'm just seeing it with fresh eyes. You know, maybe I'm just taking it for what it is. Batista, sweet. Roman, sweet. Becky, awesome. I don't know. I don't know. That's where you guys come and let me know in the comment section below. If you guys do enjoy this video, smash like. As always, I'm Tony Beats Guy. We will see you.